All right, we got a couple, I think two more videos left. This one and then one more for the airbag. So in this video, you will see this thing thrown back together. Uh, Josh said that the uh, pilot and throw up bearing are gonna be here Wednesday, which pushes me way back farther. But since those parts should be here Wednesday, I'm hoping these parts are here tomorrow. It's like, uh, let me look, it is 10.28 at night. So I'm just waiting on that oil pump so that I can finish out this video. But here is the uh, oil pan that I took at Josh's. I asked any of you engine builders what in the hell this thing is. Um, so I found that. And then if you look, there is a groove from, pretty sure this would be the number two cylinder, like somewhere around there. So I'm gonna check all of them but specifically this one itself. And then we're gonna get all the oil cleaned off of this because we got the new gasket here. And it comes with this absolute monstrosity of a gasket in between. So I can use that to make gaskets if I ever need to. Oh, come on, you're gonna fight me. There we go. Um, but there's that. So I'm gonna get that all on after we uh, check out. If I do see anything, I'll be sure to let you guys know. If I don't, cool. Um, the end goal is getting at the bare minimal the oil pan on tonight um i cannot put the adapter plate back on tonight because i'm still waiting on that guy right there but let's uh let's look under here i really don't think we'll see anything yeah i'm gonna have to get up under the front so it should be one of the first two cylinders either the back of the first one from the crank i'm gonna look for any marks on the crank as well like probably right in that area. Um, I'm gonna look on that and see if we see anything. Uh, let me get under here. I took my gloves off, so we're raw dogging it right now. But, oh, there we go, okay. So it looks like you can see some discoloration on number two. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna spin this over. I wanna get all of this gasket material off, clean off so it's a nice new surface. Like I said, I don't want any leaks or issues and I know this thing was leaking before. We're also replacing that gasket right there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna spin this motor over and see what I can see. Unfortunately, being only one person, I can't really do much uh, with the camera at the same time. All right, so I'm gonna address the uh, elephant in the room here because I get some weird people who follow me just to talk shit for some reason. Um, I do talk about financials on the channel and I was talking about this truck makes about 10, 15K gross every month. And apparently me saying that means that I'm talking all the crap in the world. And I'm just sitting over here and I'm like, that's not really a lot of money. And apparently that's me talking crap. Um, why don't I go spend money on certain stuff? So I'm just gonna address it. I have a lift right here. I have an air compressor right here. And it's a bad thing that I go to my dad's shop to use his air compressor. It's like, is it really a problem that I go and visit my dad every now and again? But yeah, we do, occasionally I'll talk about finances. If you guys want a financial video, I will break it down in the comments. But money's coming in somewhere. Like y'all act like the shop is free. Y'all act like, Maintaining my house is free. Maintaining my truck is free. Y'all act like I fucking, you know, I get all these fucking handouts. And it's like, it's not even, it's not even that deep. I'm going to start spinning this motor over now and uh, seeing where we're at. But let me know how you guys think I did on it. Because, like, I really took my time on Josh's truck. Like, I take a lot of this stuff seriously. I have become a million times better mechanic than I was, like, five years ago. Even two years ago. I've gotten a lot better customer service wise. I'm really decent. Like I try to look at some of the comments that people say, and I kind of try to take that into consideration, like um, attention to detail type things, like just cleaning up these valve covers or cleaning up anything with oil on it just makes a big difference. Uh, sitting over here and actually like not just throwing gaskets on, but actually putting like a thin layer of RTV. So the gaskets actually have a chance to settle. Um, not only that, but like if a truck has an issue, physically sitting there and figuring out why the part failed as opposed to 
just replacing the part and sending it down the road. Like in this case, okay, all the gaskets were leaking. It had blow-by issues. So to relieve that, we did those. The crank sensor failing, why did it fail? Well, after he put two different sensors on it and they kept failing, why are they failing? So now he finally brought it back to me and we put, well, it was his call to do the fluid damper. I said, let's just put a new uh, harmonic balancer. Yours is shot. Obviously it's out of balance, especially at 115 miles an hour. He said this thing just wanted to shake apart. Um, it was coming from the high RPMs. He said the engine shakes really bad above like 3,500. Clearly it was worn out. So he said, let's buy a fluid damper. He got a new sensor, but things like that. It's like, don't just replace things and say, okay, call it good. Like sit, physically sit there and figure out why. I've also been watching a lot of uh, Dave's Auto Center. And the reason I don't worry about the hate anymore is because like Dave has a big shop and it looks like he does everything as correctly as he can. And it's like, obviously when you're a big channel, you're still gonna get hate and you're still gonna get negative reviews and this and that. But dude physically sits there and takes his time on a lot of stuff and tries to do everything right and diag it correctly. And he's been a big inspiration for me to sit there and, you know, actually diagnose stuff. And I know with this speech, this video is going to be a little longer. It is what it is. If you don't like it, skip through it a little bit. So like physically sit there and just actually figure out why it failed, not just, oh, it failed. Let's replace it. Um, cause it doesn't take much. Like these seals were already done from a previous shop, you know, tap it cover was done. KDP was done just a lot of this stuff, but attention to detail and, and the guys who have commented about stuff, like it's the little things, you know, I read those comments and honestly, some of you guys have really good advice. Some of you guys have shit advice, but a lot, the majority of you guys have really, really good advice. Like something like this, right? This wasn't necessary. But this was just one of those things like attention to detail, you know, have it, you know, something like this. So it's not just sitting on the radiator or zip tied to it. I I'm happy with it. You know, it might not be perfect. Some of you guys might have better stuff, but like things like this, jo this is Josh's wiring, but I physically went through and actually butt connected. He had it just wrapped around fuse here, like little things I'm trying to make mention of. This was him. Don't, I, I can only do what I can do, but at the same time, it's like just that's that's my two cents on it. All right, thanks to one of you guys. Sorry, I forgot your name. Um, I didn't even think about this being the KDP because I've actually never had one come out before, but that makes total sense. Um, my brain's fried from working a ton, but this from number, in between number one and number two, so it probably launched the KDP at one point. That's why all this work was done. See, I'm putting two to two together. And Josh made mention that there's no numbers on this, which I already knew, but there's no numbers on this case. So I'm willing to bet that they ended up replacing the case after it launched. P, it hit the pan, it did its thing. Um, all right, now that we put two and two together, the case has been replaced, the KDP has been replaced, and let's just keep going. And uh, Josh can keep this thing. Actually, we're, we're gonna put this up on the shelf as a souvenir. All right, the oil pan is finally on. Dude, look at this, like I am plastered in dirt and shit. Yes, I wear gloves to work on stuff. It just, in my older years, I'm almost 30, trying to get, you know, not get dirty. I did forget to clean the outside of the oil pan and I didn't realize that I forgot to clean it until the RTV was already on. But there it is, um, she's gonna get a good bath. If, if you guys don't realize, like there's two bolts on this side, two bolts on this side and one nut on this side for uh, the hanging of this guy. Um, you have to reach up in here in multiple weird angles and you're gonna touch the stuff anyway But there you go. I'm done for the night waiting on parts gonna do airbags tomorrow. It's about Quarter after midnight All right, if you guys are doing this rear cam seal cap thing, I'm gonna show you guys a trick Because nobody on the internet is helpful. So I'm down here. I got it off I cleaned it out. I know 100% it was leaking. I saw it leaking, I saw it dripping. But we got the new seal coming. So we're gonna pop a uh, new seal in there and a new cap. That should be here by Friday. But if you guys wanna get these done, um, you have two options. One, drill a hole in the direct center. You guys will see right there. Drill the hole in the center and shove a bolt through it. By the time I figured out how to do it, um, you could probably just shove a t self tapper in there screw it in the whole way and it'll pull this thing right out but any other way good fucking luck all right there was actually a seal it's just very very thin 
Um, we're gonna pop a new seal in there. And uh, I was watching, Cutter Up Rob did a video on this. He didn't show a video on how to pull it. He just showed a video on how he does it. Um, he fills the inside here with sealer and then pops the new seal in. I'm gonna put the O-ring in with some sealer. So I finally got Josh to order this thing. This is an oil pressure gauge. Any of you guys running any truck, any mainly turbo vehicles, but vehicles in general, should have an oil pressure gauge, one that actually works. Um, these trucks, the lights come on at like five PSI. I got the door handle, I gotta do that today too. But slowly doing everything I should, I gotta find a place to put it. Um, yeah, that dash. Definitely needs a dash. He also let his fire extinguisher go off in here, so that was uh, that's pretty interesting. But I gotta find a place for it, and uh, we'll see. I was gonna mount it like up here. Um, I'm gonna have to pull this down and tap into the wiring and shit. But it's just an oil pressure gauge. I don't need to film the install of it. It's super easy. Sensor. This goes into the cab, and then this goes to the gauges that are already there. All right. So I haven't been doing a good job at uh, filming this, but. I got those, those are three quarter inch hose. I have them zip tied at the end. Um, there was a way that we could have tied them together, but I wanted to have two separate connections because I know Josh's truck might have a wee bit of a blow by, especially since he runs this thing around 4,000 RPMs at time. So we have it there and then it runs all the way down. And then this is just a temporary right here until I get the trans in. And then I can figure out where I want to put this um, and then I do have the cutters here, so we're gonna cut that. I got the clutch in. I did end up finding a uh, 12 millimeter, a uh, 3 8 12 point, which is what these are. I wish they were 10 millimeters. So we were gonna get the clutch, everything torqued down. Um, we got the adapter plate torqued down to I think it was like 57 foot pounds. Um, the clutch and uh, red Loctite, all that shit. So we're gonna get the back of this cleaned off, and then we will throw. The trans in, Josh is currently going through. By the way, this thing will never rust because of all the oil. Um, but Josh is doing, and I don't know what that is. That's another hose. But um, but yeah, Josh is uh, currently cleaning out his interior. He's doing a good job. Proud of him for doing that. And then he took his fridge and we're taking that for the shop unit so he can get a smaller cooler that kind of like plugs in and whatnot. But that's where she's at. We are gonna throw the trans in here in a little bit. And then this thing should be driving out tonight. I did get that rear, uh, actually, I'll show you guys. Josh actually ordered two because we didn't know when we were gonna be here. And I literally drove back because I knew that parts were here and I wanted to get his stuff done and Rich's truck done. Um, this right here, these are for a 12 valve. Josh ordered both with a seal and only one of them sent with a seal, so RTV. But we're currently cleaning out that disgusting fridge. He's yeah. cleaning it out. I had to turn off the fridge in Texas. I had food in there since. And uh, Yeah, it's nasty. Josh turned cheese into butter and milk into butter and all that, so. But yeah, so um, to keep this short and sweet, we will get the trans in, and then after that, we are gonna wait on the airbags um, just to kind of get this thing moving. Um, and then I'll set all his stuff aside so that way next time, I mean, we might do the air, I don't know yet, but let's just focus. You get truck clean and we get trans in. All right, I got Josh under there checking nuts. We have the transmission, the drive shaft, everything back in. And actually, I'm gonna show you my, uh, my routing. I did cut the one hose a little bit shorter. Let me get under here and zoom you guys in for the better quality, but look at that. They come, they dump right there. Um, all that stuff's in. I did have to go find new nuts for the uh, underside right there, but everything's tight I'll have Josh check everything over as he drives down the road because it is a 12 valve um, The only thing we have to do yet is putting this through probably gonna do the front shocks and then pull this off because this jack I'm just gonna go get a new one because this one is kind of totaled and uh, Yeah, I've been putting myself under there. I know that if it falls though, like uh, it's not that crazy um, Josh is going through and tightening all of the bolts, the carriage bolts for uh, for these. I don't think the outer ones were loose, but the center ones were coming loose a little bit. Yeah, so they do that. Um, if you guys see, I'll show you guys over on my truck. Those are a pre-trip item. I recommend checking them at least once a month if you have rails. Eventually they don't come loose, but you do have to torque them a couple of times. I'll show you on mine. I just moved that fifth wheel the other day. And then this one on the outside here is uh coming a little you can see that so got to tighten this one down but 
They don't go anywhere, but they definitely do come loose. And it even says in the instructions to make sure that after you tow for a little bit uh, to check them. So I'm pretty sure that's the only one is that one. So I'm going to tighten mine down as well once we're done here. This thing should be driving out tonight. It, it's all 100%. Oh, wait, no, we got to do the shifter tower. But it's all 100% together besides the shifter tower. So I'm going to do that next after. Yeah, <sighs> my boy. He's working on slowly cleaning this shit out, but. I did not do the left side. I got to get under here and uh, do the shifter tower. And then he's got to get me a mount for this. Um, I thought about making one. Like I could, I could make a mount right here that would bolt to the back side of this and just set it there. Uh, that's going to be up to him. Um, it's just a time-consuming task, is all. Especially because it's going to vibrate and wobble and shit. So he's checking some bolts. We're going to get uh, the rear drop down after we're done with the front shocks, and that way we can drop the axle. We'll put jack stands under the back, and that will allow us to uh, fit those airbags in. Because unfortunately which this is a whole nother video, but unfortunately with his truck sitting up the way it is, there's no way those bags are gonna fit in because you guys can see how big and even like squeeze down. When I squeeze them down, it comes down to about this far and it's still not, still not enough. All right, so we're gonna give her a test start. I got the interior back together. We're not gonna move it or anything, but I at least, why'd you take the, is this your key? Yeah. Did you take it off of there? Yeah. Why would you put it on here? Because it's my set of keys. Oh, I hate that sound. I fucking hate second gen. And I also gotta move my shit. I hate shit. that sound too. It's even worse when you're pissed off. <laughs> we can delete that. It's kind of tempting. The only thing is we won't have this gauge working. Why not? Because, I mean, it, it works, but it's not plugged in. Oh. So it goes right to max. And also I want to redo these because if I turn the key off, they go right back to their default. So we need to, you need to get those, uh, pieces but let's uh we have tack why is my oil light there you go everything works so i'm thinking about making a bracket that like holds that right there but we'll see she runs though sorry about the shit quality I don't see any leaks under it either. All right, so we played like hell, but we got all the shocks on. Josh is putting the outside wheels on. He's got to, you torqued the fronts, right? Yeah. Okay, so fronts are torqued. Gonna bleed the cooling system um, and then remove the jack stands. And then I'm gonna do a pretty much bath of this bay. I'm gonna wait to start this until tonight just to make sure that all that RTV's dry. And depending on how it sounds, we'll determine on how uh, we approach. So this will be driven out, and then we got to bring the green truck in. You guys are going to like that project. Pretty much just going to do a shell, um, get the wheels and tires good, pull the motor. We do have a 12 valve for sale, not on sale, for sale. If anybody wants a good spare 12 valve that leaks minimal oil, zero blow by. Josh, Josh claims zero blow by. So we got a 12 out for sale. I think it's got three low threes on it. Oh, it's got 330,000. 330 on it. But no blow by, so. Yeah, so 2,800, come get it. That's less mileage, or that's more than mine. Yeah, well, this one's resealed. If anybody wants me to do a reseal on it, I will. But let's uh, get that on. We're going to get it off the jack stands and then start it. And Josh has been organizing in this and that. So I'm going to have him drive down the road. I want him to check, make sure that there's no transmission leaks out the top. Because uh, very minimal on the RTV, it was like I had such a little amount left. Um, if it leaks, I'll just go over it today. Um, now that the parts stores are getting open, you can see we got sunlight. So this video is going to be pretty long. But we'll, uh, we'll get some video footage of Josh driving it here in a little bit. All right. Oh, you got the cap? All right. Um, everything should be good. Uh, once it warms up. So Josh is going to start it and then back out. And then we're going to just let the cooling system bleed itself while it's out there. Excited to see yeah, it, we just to... decided just to set it up there. I don't um, care for right now. I'm happy with that. We need to get to work, you know. 
What's it at? 66. Yeah, it's fine. It's a little warm. Going down the, it'll go up as you drive. You'll, on cold, cold days, you'll see 100 at times. Like it gets damn close to 100. What? That brake feels a lot tighter. New vacuum pump. Resealed? Yeah, it's resealed. Oh, yeah. It tighter. It moves. Don't be fucking with it. Here. Go over here. Line up like right there. Yeah, we have a big mess to clean up. I'd like to get this taken care of. What? Oh yeah, that's right. You uh, yeah, you need to fill that. I forgot about that. Remember, I had to pull everything off, so you're gonna need power steering fluid. You have some, right? No, but you hear that new noise? You like clicking? That's always done that. Yeah, don't run it too much. I would pull it over here. And we'll throw fluid in it. Why'd you shut it off? No, let it run. You gotta put fluid in it. Ah oh, yes, 12 ounce. I hear a thumping though, it's weird, I don't know. So I just went through with my temperature gun. It's doing 110, 110, 120, 120, 110, 110, which is about normal because the middle's always gonna be kinda like, obviously at idle, the middle it's getting all of them. So, he's running good, he's doing the power steering now. There is no vapor, nothing. Like, there's no blow-by at all whatsoever with a new vacuum pump, so we'll see. I'm gonna have him monitor it. Yeah, I think now that it's warming up, that it's going away. So, once it warms up completely, we'll check the blow-by again. So we're sitting here warming it up. Something to mention about these oil pressure gauges these things are bullshit. These, the factory one will read what it wants, it wants you to think. This is just a switch with an arm. That's all it is. So like if I let it go down to idle, you're idling about perfect, like 770. But like the, the gauge just fluctuates. Like, see what I mean? Like it's normal for it to come up when you do that, but like it keeps fluctuating back and forth. Usually it'll sit there or there, but this one's been doing that. Whereas the actual one ha is staying consistent. It won't drop below that like 30, 40 mark until you actually hit zero. It was coming to a stop. No, it'll do five. At five PSI is when it'll it'll go to zero. Yeah, I was at uh, I was coming to a stop at a stoplight that was like two and a half plus gallons short of oil, and all the oil rolled to the front of the pan, and the light finally came on. But it'll still tell you you're at 30 and 40 until then. He said there's nothing under the truck. No oil, no nothing. There's no blow-by. Now that it's warmed up a little bit, we're probably sitting around like 150. I want to see what the blow-by is now that it's kind of like warmed up. There we go. Steam is like non-existent. I don't see shit under there. I want him to drive it before we make that consensus, but yeah, I don't see nothing. You put the coolant cap on? Yeah. All right. Go driver. Go driver around a little bit. In that's it. Other than the bags that they wouldn't work, uh, we couldn't do his bags today because the gooseneck hitch comes out. Um, we're going to try to find a ball that works with it so he can get rid of the plate, but 
that guy in the center there you guys probably can't see uh, but yeah the bags aren't gonna work we have to uh, modify the brackets all right so Josh has had it parked for a minute I'm gonna check underneath There is a dot right there, but we also, there should be some residual. So I told him to look out for that. Already beaten the hell out of it. So he's gonna have some residual in the bell housing. Um, not that one, up here somewhere. But I told him to drive it, he's ready to hit the road. He should have a reliable truck at this point. I have been telling him for years, we need to pull that cam and do that front case. Look at that fucking chiefin. Part of him says he wants to beat it. Part of him also says he's out of money. that's pretty much going to do it for this video um stick around this week we are going to be doing some cool stuff with the bertha um i definitely have some things that i need to do and we need to clean this condenser and front end and just get bertha um i am thinking about being an asshole and just spray bombing the entire truck black i know that every the doors the rockers the cab corners the bed all of it's getting replaced so I kind of just wanted to start spraying the bed and seeing what I can do. Um, my spray bomb abilities actually aren't that bad in general. I painted this thing, a bunch of shit on it, and uh, it came out, in my opinion, pretty damn good. Like these things here, like these came out absolutely perfect. Um, this is a little dusty right now, but this came out pretty decent too. I used a different paint on that. But I do have some gloss, and then I, I'm, I'm really thinking about just throwing some black paint on this. And... Uh, just fucking sending it knowing that I'm replacing it anyway, but I'm so done with this white. Um, if I can get the bed good, then I'll go to the next step and do the rockers and the roof, and then I'll do the next step and I'll do the doors. But uh, let me know if you guys would be interested in that. We also gotta make a laptop mount, welder cover. I thought about making a cold air intake, um, like a thing so that it sucked in colder air. Um, Josh was reminding me about the snorkel that I did. No, we're not going to do that again. That was kind of neat though. Um, but other than that, this is, this is where we're at. So it's very unfortunate what happened to this truck. Um, I got to call him in a minute and let him know the bad news on that one. If you, I don't know which video I'm posting first. I'm probably going to post that one. Um, but Josh's truck runs absolutely perfect. No oil pressure issues. Uh, oil pressure gauge now. Um, which is the same thing I tell all my customers get an oil pressure gauge in general Josh has run his truck out of oil three times now and Contrary to popular belief. I've gotten comments saying it was my fault. Mind you. He had an oil pressure sensor fail Twice um, I, he ran it out of oil filled it up and then ran it out of oil again and then also he had the AFC housing um, somehow two or three months after I put it on. I don't know if he touched it after me. I can't confirm nor deny. Um, but the damper being a vibration issue was a, like he was doing 115 miles an hour with the damper like way out of balance and it threw a lot of shit. A lot of bolts came loose on that truck. Like it's just, it is what it is. He had the crank sensor fail, which actually it wasn't the crank sensor's fault. It was the damper, 100%. Um, that damper was shot. It was way out of balance. It was throwing rubber anywhere, everywhere. It was rubbing on the case and it was throwing sensors out of whack. So we're gonna take all his old sensors and probably test them on other trucks and uh, verify that they all work. And it was actually the, uh, the harmonic balancer's fault the whole time. So now he's got a fluid damper, everything should be good. He's got a rebuilt vacuum pump. Um, everything on that truck is done. He's gonna call me later and let me know how much he enjoys it or if he has any issues. And you guys will see it because I don't hide shit on this channel. Like, if there's a problem, I'm going to show it. So I know this video is a little long-winded. I hope you guys enjoyed it. His truck is running, driving. He just drove it home. Um, 
Cleaned out the interior a lot. Also, we got a fridge now. Thanks, Josh. I'm going halves with him on that. I'm gonna take 75 bucks off his bill. He paid 150 bucks, so it's gonna be a shop thing um, for both of us. So, see you guys in the next video. Still working on website updates. Chill, we'll get the website back up. All right, so I'm gonna pop this at the end of the video. Josh literally just fucking called me, and he's like, so the internet says the 215 pump, a rack plug won't really make much of a difference. Um, Josh was hitting about 42 pounds of boost, uh, 47 at his peak, but like 42 has been what he's hit, been hitting lately. Um, he floored it. He's like, Oh, I saw 50 and let out. And I was like, okay, that's a nice improvement. Um, and then he's like, here, let me try fifth gear. And he floored it again. Boost gauge went right to 60. Like I'm talking like spooled immediately. So we need, we need to put a wastegate back on that truck. Um, it has the wastegate. But it's the the line we took off of it because he was only hitting 42 pounds or some shit and he wanted to hit like 55 was the goal. Um, so we're going to be putting that line back on. But yeah, Josh immediately takes it out and just shoots it to 60 PSI. And then y'all fucking blame me when these trucks have issues. I didn't build his truck to make 60 some pounds of boost. So keep that in mind. He needs to chill. Uh, we're going to put a wastegate back on it. Um, he said he's not going to do it again, but at the same time, it's like, bro, 60 pounds. Come on now. It's a hot shot truck. <sighs> Let it make you money before you blow it up again.